Welcome to our video on how to win at Connect 4. If you're not sure about the rules of playing Connect 4, please check out this other video that I have put together explaining the rules and the basics of, of the, the, you know, the game. But this is a video to show you how to beat people at this game, how to win a couple of strategy suggestions that are sure to help you improve your game. Let's go ahead and take a look at them. Strategy number one keep your options open. For this strategy what I'd like to look at is um, to think about where you put your pieces especially near the beginning of the game. If I put my piece in the corner like that I limit my possibilities. I have three options for this one being part of a row of four. However if I put my piece in the middle I have all sorts of options. My options go in all directions. Not only do they go in directions they also cross over on the bottom row. I could have two on one side of it, one on the other. So you can make a lot of different options by just thinking about where the spaces are open and available and keeping basically keeping your options open. So that was strategy one. Keep your eyes open, look for open spaces, and don't work yourself into a corner like this uh, red player has done in this, this situation. Strategy number two, purposefully block. So when you're blocking your opponent, you can't possibly block every direction your opponent can go. So you want to plan out your blocks so that they help you make your own rows. So look at the situation we have right here. Um, red has gone three times, black's gone twice. Um, where would be a good place for black to go that would help him to block red as well as set up his own lines. A good way to look at that is to think about what lines are possible for black to have. Look at all the options that he has. He has the one um, angling option right here, angling upwards. He's got, you know, if he built on top of this, built on top of that, he could go, you know, horizontal here. Um, not a lot of vertical options for, for black at this point, but I guess he could in the future set those up. But he needs to think about that. He really wants this place, right? There's lots of options based around that place. So when he's thinking about purposefully blocking, blocking red by going here is not helping him. So what he wants to do is block somewhere that prevents red from getting one of red's possible rows, which are right there. He wants to block red's possible rows while also making his own possible. So you've just got to think about that. Um, I'm not going to tell you what it, I would do, what the best situation might be, but think about that as you're, as you're working with blocking. Number three, force your opponent. In this situation here, um, you the black pieces have forced the red piece to go somewhere that's totally separated from the other pieces. Um, notice that red would basically have to go in the corner. If you can force your opponent to do something that's not very good, then basically you're forcing your opponent to waste a turn. So this red piece is then buried in the corner and not as useful. So that's a good strategy to, you know, if, when you can, when you can force your opponent to waste a turn, it's a, it's a fun strategy to, to kind of throw them off their game and make sure they're paying attention. Oftentimes, if you set something up like this, if your opponent's so focused on what they're doing, you might actually win um, instead of have, forcing your opponent to bury a piece. So keep your options open there and try and force your opponent to do things they might not want to do. Strategy four, squares are usually good. Notice um, that the red player here has four pieces that form a square. When you form a square you have a lot of options in all directions. Um, they're, they're difficult to block. You can block some of the square but it's pretty much impossible to block all parts of the square. So think about like this square here. Look at all the options that red has opened up by having that square. Red will be able to force the black piece to go pretty much wherever they want um, because they have that 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 square. It's a powerful move. It's a good move if you can get a square set up. It's a really great thing to have in a Connect Four game. Strategy number five. This one's a little bit more complicated. 
to own a column. If you think about it, um, the board is set up in 6 by 7. And 6 by 7 means that there is a total of 42 open spaces on a board. But you can only go in 7 of those spaces. You have to go on along the top. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. One of those places. So you only really have seven options of where you can go. If you own a column, basically what you've done is you've set up a situation where the other player is limited in their options. Look at the board that we have here. See how if black goes here, red wins. So that means that red owns that column. Red, red is basically in full control of that. Red knows that black will not go in that column, and if, it, if black does go in that column, red will win. So red has a huge advantage, and red can control things based on that. So trying to own a column or two columns or three columns is a really great strategy for forcing the opponent to, to do things they, they might not want to do, or um, basically gain control of the game. It's a tough strategy to think about, but it's also a really great way to, to gain control and become better at the, at the game. All right, strategy six. This one here is probably the hardest to set up. This is a win-win situation. If you look at the board right now, you might notice that red has a pretty good strategy. They have a, a square going on here. You've got three in a row in this direction, three in a row in that direction. A lot of good things happening for red. But unfortunately, red's going to lose. And the reason why red is going to lose is because bl black can win here or here. You see that? Black has set up a situation that if red tries to block, he'll win. And if red doesn't block, he'll win. So um, if you set up two spaces that are both good spots for yourself, you can't be blocked. And that's what strategy six is all about. Setting up a win-win situation where you basically have two spaces there and there where you would get four in a row. So that's strategy six. It's, again, the most difficult to set up and completely impossible to block against. It's, it's wonderful. All right. It also works really well with strategy five. If you own a column, it can help you set up this win-win situation. So that's also a really good thing. Um, so sometimes you, you almost have to build on top and then underneath afterwards um, so that you own a column and you can use that to your advantage actually setting up something like this. So a quick recap. Strategy number one, keep your options open. Strategy number two, purposefully block. Strategy number three, try and force your opponent to waste his or her move. Strategy number four, squares are good. Strategy five, own the column. Strategy six, set up a win-win situation. All right, have fun playing. Good luck beating your mom or dad at this game. Have a wonderful day.